In this video I am going to explain what an object pool is, why you should almost definitely use one for every game you make in Unity and how to make one in its most simple form. If you have never heard about object pools or didn't quite understand them, don't worry, this video right here is for beginners. In the next video we will dive much deeper with an automatic object pool, but let's get the basics down first and if you are just starting out and making small games, this simple object pool might be enough. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Also, I've got some free Unity one-on-one -on -one coaching coming up, so keep an eye out for that. So what is an object pool? It's a simple functionality that allows you to reuse game objects instead of destroying and instantiating them. Imagine a game like Super Mario as a real-life theater. For copyright reasons I had to do my own character, so this is Meth Man, a former drug addict who turned superhero. In a theater, that role will probably be played by the best actor of your cast. Then you got all those enemies that he's slaying and they would be played by the less talented and underpaid actors. Now if you were to hire an actor for every enemy, you end up with a cast of a thousand people, each of them being on stage for a few seconds. That would be incredibly impractical. Instead, you should ask yourself what is the highest number of enemies that will be on stage at the same time and that's the number of actors you need to hire. When one gets killed, he just runs behind the curtain, refreshes his makeup and appears again, pretending to be a new enemy. And that is the principle of an object pool. But why do you need one? Every game object in the scene needs memory. Luckily, this is done automatically in C-sharp so you don't have to worry about allocating it. There is just one tiny problem and that is that every time you delete something, that memory has to be freed by the garbage collector. That too is automatic, but it takes time which can lead to your game lagging. So that leaves you with one responsibility here and that is to reduce the amount of work the garbage collector has to do and that's where the object pool comes in. Instead of destroying objects, we hide them somewhere off camera or make them inactive and when we create a new one, we first check if there is an inactive one we could reuse instead. So as an example I have this like little project here with those flying enemies that come towards the hero and right now they are not getting pulled but we are gonna add an object pool into this existing project. Let's take a quick look at the enemy first, which is a prefab. It's a simple game object that has the enemy script, circle collider and a sprite renderer. There is also a second sprite renderer attached to it, which is the body sprite. So I have the wings and the body separated, so I can easily change the body color. So let's take a look at the script. First of all we have the speed which we can set in the inspector so it's serialized and then update we're just going to take the position and we subtract a new vector 3 and here for the x value of that new vector we're going to take speed times time dot delta time so whatever amount of time it took to calculate that frame that the update is running on and the y and z value will remain unchanged so by removing that we are moving from the right to the left then there's a serialized field for the sprite renderer, the body sprite, because that's the one we're going to change the color on. And it's also serialized because if we were to use like if we were if we were to assign it by saying get component sprite renderer, we would end up with the sprite renderer of this one, like just this, but we want the body sprite. So all I did here is I um, just assigned it like this. Okay. And then there's a public method called setUpEnemy that takes a color as a parameter. Then we take that color and assign the body sprite that color. And lastly we have onCollisionEnter2D. When that happens we destroy the game object. Right now it's just set up so that when we touch the hero we die. That's pretty much it for the enemy class. Next we have the stage manager that is responsible for creating those enemies. So first of all we get a reference to the enemy prefab. Then we have a vector 2 spawn point just where are we going to instantiate them. A list of colors we can set in the inspector. 
and those three here are responsible for the spawning so we have a min spawn time and a max spawn time and a spawn counter in wake we set the spawn counter to a range between the minimum and maximum so there's a bit of variation in there and then in update we are going to reduce that again by whatever time it took to calculate that frame so if spawn counter equals one it means it's going to take one second until it reaches zero and then we check if it is smaller or equal to zero first of all we're just going to give it a new value once again we're going to use random range and then we're going to instantiate an instance of the enemy prefab and we're going to assign that right away into a variable so we make enemy new enemy is the new field and we assign that the instance we are creating i'm passing in the transform of this game object as the transform parent that's the second parameter when we're instantiating so they're all going to be children of the stage manager game object then we take the new enemy and we set the position to the spawn point then we're going to get a color from our color list and again we're using random dot range but this time we're passing in integers keep in mind this one was a float and one thing to keep in mind when you use integers in random.range the second one is going to be excluded so if say if the color count were three we would have zero and three here that means we're getting values zero one or two but never three uh, might be a bit confusing but it actually makes sense for exactly this scenario when you have a list you just want to pass in the count so you don't have to do count minus one you just pass in the count and that means you're getting an item and you can always use that so we're saying colors get me item one two or three or whatever the count is then we have the new color that we uh, saved in a field as well and we call the setup enemy function on the new enemy passing in the new color and of course that takes it and assigns the body spike Okay, and this is it, like this is the standard. You would probably create it like intuitively. And yeah, it's working quite well. But let's go ahead and change it a bit. So we are using an object pool. I already have a class here called enemy pool. And it's totally up to you how you're going to create it. It could be like its own class. But I'm going to show you that we can just take this, which is not in the game right now, it's just a script I wrote before. And we can just take it and implement that in the stage manager. So first of all, we're going to copy all of that. Paste that into the stage manager. And to keep things tidy, we're going to put the list right on top and so this list here in active enemies that is pretty much the pool so now instead of instantiating an enemy what we're going to do is we call this method called create enemy which returns an enemy instance we just make the field here and then first thing we do is check if there is an inactive enemy so if anything is on that list, if that is bigger than zero. So, okay, something is on there. We are going to set the new enemy field. So element zero of that list. And then we also remove that from that list because we are now going to use it. You could do it this way. You could set remove new enemy. You could also do inactive enemies dot remove at zero. Obviously don't use both and don't do something like in active enemies equals null because now it's uh, it's still an item on that list and you would end up returning null and that would definitely lead to an error at some point okay just in case and then we return that new enemy if nothing is on that list we are going to create a new one and we're going to do that exactly the same way we're already doing it up there because well we don't have an inactive one we need to create a new one and then we're going to return that enemy 
And so now, instead of using instantiate, we're just saying create enemy. So we got the microphone in front of my keyboard. It's a <laughs> bit difficult. Anyhow, that's all we're doing now. Saying create enemy, and then this method takes care of it if we have something in the pool. And now, of course, we have to make sure that when an enemy gets killed, instead of destroying the game object, we just need to set it inactive and put on that list. And so the way to call this is, right now, what we're doing is, when we're destroying it, is in the enemy class itself. So I think one of the easiest way would be to simply give the enemy a reference to the stage manager so it can, the enemy itself can call that method. And let's do that in a really simple way. Probably not the best in terms of uh, coding principles and that. We just make a public stage manager, stage man, stage man. And here we're going to say, stageman dot kill enemy and we're passing in this one this instance of this script instead of destroying it now of course it needs to know about the stage manager and since this enemy script is sitting on a prefab while the stage manager is an instance we already have in this scene we can just assign it in the scene but we can just say it here where we create the new enemy you know that this one is going to get called once for everyone. So we just say your enemy dot stage man equals this. So we know the first time we're assigning it, okay, it's going to be here. And yeah, this is pretty much it. This is the object pool now. So let's see if this works. Well, actually, it doesn't work because I forgot one very important thing and I totally did that on purpose, so you could have a, a little quiz. And so, of course, what we have to do when we get one of those inactive enemies, the game object is disabled. So right now, we are just placing an inactive object in the scene. But of course, we have to make sure that we, we enable it. So let's say enemy.gameobject.setActive true and now it should work so let's see the stage manager sitting on the stage we have the first enemy it is getting killed and it appears in the inactive enemy list and then this one this is all the enemies we created in total and you see right now it's really just two enemies, but they're always having the, a different color, even though they are the same game object. And I just did the color thing like as an example to show you that when you, we use game objects, just like think about, okay, maybe it's just way easier to change it a little bit and then we use the same objects instead of like making a bunch of different prefabs and all that. Okay, one last thing I at least want to mention is that you can use on enable and on disable. So we have on enable. And on enable gets called every time a game object is set active. So awake, as you might know, is only get called the first time a script is running, but on enable gets called again and again. And so we have on enable and of course on disable which is getting caught when the game object this script is sitting on gets disabled. And you could use that you could use that for things that you know you don't want any other class to take care of. So for example you could have um, a hit point. So you say private float, you say max hit points equals 10 you want this class to always have uh, 10 hit points this this enemy and maybe you want to set it in, in the inspector so you serialize it and then you have a private float called 
current hit points. And so every time it takes a hit, uh, you have some method that reduces it. When it's below zero, you destroy it. And when you place the game object in the scene again, you might want to do current hit points equals next hit points. And you know, you don't need a stage manager to take care of that because you already know you definitely always want it this way. And you can just use on enable and on disable instead of like setup enemy. That was just an example. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Also, if you have like ideas, what do you want to see next? Uh, criticism, feedback, whatever, just leave a comment. And then hopefully very soon I'm going to upload a video with an automatic object pool. So you don't have to write this script again and again. You can actually reuse the script for just about every game you make for every object, every prefab. You just write those scripts once. They are a bit more complicated. And then you never have to worry about object pools again for the rest of your life, hopefully. Okay, thanks for listening or watching and goodbye.